Hello students, Mrs. Wynn here, just to give you a quick tutorial on Moodle tools and how to find the login and how to get started on some research. Just to let you know, inside of MyCCA, since it's new to everybody this year, I want to remind you where the resource page is and where you can find the secondary library. And this is where you'll see Moodle tools link right here, and these research links will grow as I start to add information. But I want you to know you do have a link here to My Moodle Tools. It actually has a new website this year. It's my.moodletools.com, where you always want to log in on the right. We log in with our Google account, so that's your full email address. So if you put in your Gmail account, at student.ccaeagles.org, you will have instant access to your account. And also, there's another way you can log in through your Google Drive. If you are already logged into Google, Remember how to navigate is through your waffle menu, and then you can scroll down and you will see Moodle Tools is still connected to your Google Drive, even though we now have MyCCA. So two ways to get there, through the website or through the link. Once you're there, since it's a new year, it's going to ask you to um, save your profile and make sure this is you. And also, if you're a new student, you're going to hit Create Account with your Google account, remember, at student.ccaeagles.org and it will enter everything for you as long as you use that school email. So once I'm in my account for the year, if you're brand new, you'll see nothing, but if you are a returning student, you'll see information from years past. And the first thing you want to do is probably archive your old information or your old projects. Remember, I never suggest that you delete it because you may want to go back and look at that research one day. You might have a similar project. So to archive it, you simply just click the check marks, archive, that will hide it for now, and then you can always go back and show archive projects. If you notice, everything looks brand new this year. Moodle Tools has a brand new interface, so it may look a little different to you. So that's why I'm going to do a new tutorial for you just to remind you how to get started. And here you have new project, so you can go ahead and get started using the MLA, is what um, National History Day uses, but remember this is for more than just National History Day. You may have an English or a science project that you want to do. So I'm just going to do an NHD test project in Kinsey's account just to get us going. Remember, I'm doing fast forward research just to show you some examples. So and also here, it's reminding me I have to pick starter for elementary school, junior for middle, or now advanced high school. So I'm going to click advanced and submit that, and that will create my new project. And again, you can see the dashboard is all new this year. Here you have a chance to put in your research question. What are you asking? What are you trying to answer? You can fill in this part, depending on what subject is assigned. This is where you can see a 30-day log of all the work you've done. That keeps you accountable as you're working towards National History Day or towards a research paper. Your teacher can also see your history project there, the history of your project when you've logged in. And then if you want to go right to your paper, you can start your paper in Google Docs and that will link it automatically. So if I click here and I'm already logged into Google, it will make me a Google Doc automatically. I have to click Allow. And then you'll see it automatically names my paper the same thing as my project. So there we go. We're all connected and now I've started my paper automatically. So going back to Noodle Tools here, most of the time your teacher wants you to share their pro your project with them so they can see it. So when you share, your teacher will tell you the name of, your, um, of their inbox. So usually it'll start with the teacher's name, either Larson, or depending on who your teacher is, make sure you're looking for this year's project. Make sure you have the right block and the right year. So when you're choosing that, make sure you have the right teacher. Now here, if you are going to share your Google Doc with your teacher, you also want to click that. And then you can say Done. And that way your teacher will have your project and your paper if you're using a process paper. All right, that is, was using an old project. That's what it's telling me. So yes, I know I cannot use that one because that's Ms. Larson's old class. So that's okay. Going back. If I'm sharing with another student, I can add a student here by the username. And you know, usually it's the first initial and the whole last name. And you want to make sure if you're sharing with somebody that you use a different title or put your initials in the title so you make sure you don't get confused which project you're working on because you can share resources, but of course you each have to contribute your own note cards and your own research. So that's just a quick overview of the dashboard, and then you can use this to-do list if you like to keep yourself organized, 
You can add items to your to-do list like due dates and things like that for homework to keep you um, organized. All right, so the next thing you can see the bibliography page is now called sources. And we always want to start good research with good sources. So this is our page now for our bibliography. And we're going to start by creating a new citation. Since we're doing fast forward research, we're going to go to a Grow Your article that we already have bookmarked here on Rosa Parks. And we're going to see that we've done some research here. So we're ready to add to our sources page. So when I click on it, I'm going to say create new citation. And you can see this looks a little different. Now we can say right away, where is it? Okay, I'm going to think about it. Okay, I'm on the web, right? But it's not a website. It's a database because I had to log in. So that can make you give you a little clue sometimes. Did I have to log in? It's usually a library database or a database that CCA pays for. So okay, it's a database, but then what did I find here? It's written by Grolier. There's not another um, author. It's not another book inside of a database. It's actually an encyclopedia, so it's written by Grolier. So if I go back to my citation, it says right here, original content in the database. So each one of these is a choice. And this gives you a little key down here. Electronic, online, is it a periodical, non-periodical. So it kind of gives you some clues to go by and it's color coded. So this is original content, so I'm going to choose that. And then it's going to go immediately to my citation page. Now remember the great thing about using recommended resources is that instead of having to do the work of a bibliography, I can copy and paste a citation. So since Grolier is a recommended database and we subscribe to it, you always want to look for those citation tools. So if you're looking around, you can see how to cite this article. Sometimes it's up in the right-hand corner. I see it right here at the top, how to cite this article. So it's going to go all the way down, and then I'm going to see MLA here, and that's what I said I want to use. So I can copy the citation right here. So I'm going to Command-C on a Mac. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it right here into the box. And then I am ready to submit. And ta-da, it does it for me automatically. It tells me I'm on an online database. It tells me what I have. Oh, look at this, archive and annotate. That reminds me, if I'm doing an HD, I have to annotate this source. So maybe I didn't do it right in the beginning, but I can go back and I can annotate it now. I'm going to close this for now so I can go on to another source and show you how to add a different type of source. So if I want to add a new citation, this time I'm going to use another database and I'm going to show you where to find the Broward County Library databases. So if I go to the Broward County Library, I have it bookmarked here, and make sure I have a library card. It's very important. I can do all my research online. Online resources, and I'm going to go students K to 12 to make it easy for myself so I can see what databases are good for students. And then I have so many choices here. I can go to history and social studies. I can choose from biographies, all different things. Well, I actually found a great um, picture of Rosa Parks since I'm doing research. This is a photo and illustration. It's a primary source. You can tell it was taken at the time of the event. And it's actually from the Library of Congress. So I'm going to use this. It's from a database. So if I go back to Noodle Tools, it's from a database. And then remember the little key down here? It's an image. So I'm going to look up here. Where do I see images? Okay, here it is. It's a photo or it's an illustration. So I can click that. And now I'm ready to cite. But remember, I'm using a database, so the work should be done for me. Let's see. If I look around, do I see the citation? Yes. It's all right here, so I can copy. I can come back to my card. I can paste. I click copy and paste. Oh, no, I didn't. Here we go. Copy and paste citation. Now I'm ready to paste. And then I can look down here where we talk about annotations. So you can add the annotation for NHD. You have to explain why it's a good source, what information you took from that source, which is obvious because it's a picture. So now you're ready to submit. Now I found two good sources. I'm going to do one more. So I'm ready to create a new citation. I found another database in the Broward Library. And this one is actually, I was able to find an autobiography. So it's written by Rosa Parks, which also makes it a primary source. But it's an ebook. So again, I didn't have to go to the library, I didn't have to check it out, I can read it all online. But it's an actual ebook. it's her autobiography. So I can see if it has citation tools, and there they are. 
on the right hand side and I can see here's the MLA so I can copy it I can go back to my project now let's see it's a database now inside this database what was it well I just said it was an autobiography right so it's actually a book so when I choose the book source I still have to go to it's not a print source but I can copy and paste right there my citations done for me command V I can do my annotation now or I can go back later and I can submit so right now I have three good sources so let's see I have an online database I have a book and I have a photo or an illustration because remember especially for NHD you want to have different types of sources not all the same kind so the next thing I want to do is once I find a good source I'm going to make a note card now remember, note cards are made for chunks of information, not a whole lot of information. You can see the desktop looks a little different here. You have a new option this year. You can actually make your outline slide better, bigger. If you're working on your outline or if you want more desktop for your note cards, you can stretch it out. So I'm ready to make a new card because I'm ready to record some information. So remember, every card has to have a separate name, a different name, just like when you're saving a document. It won't let you have the same name twice. So I could do like Rosa Parks. And I could say Rosa Parks 1, and so on. So let's see. This source, I'm going to say, I'm going to take from the Encyclopedia Americana, something that I learned. So I'm going to name it RP1. I've got my source chosen, because remember, all three are showing. And as I add sources, it's going to continue to grow. So I have to pay attention. Okay, this information is coming from the Encyclopedia. So if I go back to my article, I can say, what kind of information did I want to use for my project? I'm going to take a little chunk here that has her information about where she was born. So I'm going to copy, and this says copy and paste, right? It's a reminder, direct quotation. All I have to do is click, and it goes away. So I can paste right there. Remember, this is to remind you to be you honest, have integrity, that this is where you copy and paste, and then over here is where you put it in your own words. All right, URL, always a good idea to copy that URL so I know where did I get this information. Well, because you logged into this um, database you can see up here it just says go.growyer.com so it's going to bring you back here or you can I will bring you back to the database you can email this article to yourself which is a great idea go ahead and email it to your school um, account and then you'll have the whole article and it'll live there while you're doing your research so I suggest that because if you just copy and paste here you'll end up logging back into Growyer and doing the research again so you can still copy it just so you remember where you got it from and then here, if you need a page number to remind you, here you're ready to type my own words, right? Not plagiarizing, keeping you honest. And then if you want to add any thinking here, like what you want to do next, oh, I want to look in Library of Congress for some more information, etc. And then you can use tags, just like a hashtag is like a subject or to keep you organized. You can put like um, her life bio. You could put a hashtag there for each of the cards you make about her life. And then you could do maybe the bus boycott could be a tag when you find information on that and so on. So make sure you save it. That's your information. But the great thing about the note cards this year is they auto save like Google does. And you can even manage the versions here. So maybe if you delete something by mistake or you want to go back and see what you did before, you can look at different versions just like in Google Drive. You can do that. So we're going to do save and close. Looks like my internet is being a pain. So save and close, but remember there's an auto save. So here it is, Rosa Parks 1. I can hover over it, gives me a little information about it. Same idea, I can stack them up, like all the ones that I do about her biography. I can make a pile. I can also come over here and drag them into a outline. So I'm ready to write. You can drag them right in, and you can see Rosa Parks 1 or whatever you title will go right in order. It will keep you organized. Um, here you can manage the piles, so once you have them stacked up, you can see more information. You can also, um, let's see, when I want to do details, I can go back here, I can go back to edit. Your teacher can add a comment and give you some feedback on your research. And then you can also, if you haven't linked it, you can go back and you can link it to a source here. Um, to do the color coding, let's see if I right click on it. I know I can add colors in different tags. The colors this year are much better. It's not just a little dot. You'll see it makes the whole card a different color. So I think that will be great for your organization as well. 
And remember, paper goes right out to your Google Docs. So that will keep you organized and you can start writing your um, process paper or if it's for English, you have your research paper right there ready to go. So that's just a quick tutorial. If you have any questions, you can always come see us in the library.